The Mergui Archipelago is home to an ethnic minority called the Moken. Their name literally means dive into the sea. From a young age, they begin to discover this underwater world. The Moken are traditionally a nomadic people who move around the Andaman Sea off Myanmar's western coast. For nearly 50 years, this region, like the rest of Myanmar, was cut off from the rest of the world because of the military dictatorship. Now it's accessible, an exciting development for marine biologists. An interesting site, very low visibility, a lot of sediments, yet quite a diverse coral community, sort of many families represented. Sort of, yeah, quite surprising to see so much coral cover in, uh, in an area where the light wasn't getting too low. This layer of sediment all across the top of the corals. The biologists are conducting an 11-day expedition, diving to 28 different sites around the archipelago. Robert Howard is here with an international team of scientists to assess the region's biodiversity. The scientists first need to establish how intact the coral reefs are before they can decide how best to protect the area. So they're collecting shells and fish and taking samples to identify bacteria and marine diseases. This is the one we saw before Cephalopholus argus. A sea rich in marine life is also important for the future of the next generation. Most of the Moken no longer live the traditional lives of nomads, but their livelihood still revolves around catching fish. When I was young, my whole family lived on a kabang boat, and we went fishing, spearfishing. We also went onto the islands to collect honey and shells. And back then, there was an abundance of everything. Then we went into town and traded things for rice, vegetables, and everything else we needed. These days, fishing is more difficult. Melchar doesn't have any children to help her. She still goes out daily and catches one to two kilos of fish, although she doesn't venture out as far as she used to. For the scientists, every dive tells its own story, and it doesn't always make for good reading. The bigger, lucrative fish are largely missing. The practice of fishing with dynamite to boost the catch has had a devastating impact on the coral here. Over the past 15 years, destructive fishing methods have reduced fish stocks by up to 90%. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, another one behind there, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. Thirty-three boats. These guys can precipitate a fisheries crash very easily in these numbers. In terms of Mech Archipelago, I don't think we have passed the tipping point yet. It is quite close in some places. The light boats that are fishing out the juvenile fishes, everybody we talked to in the last trips, all the fishermen said their catch rate, the quality of the catch has declined since the, the light boats started appearing five or six years ago. In neighboring Thailand, overfishing has devastated coastal areas. The organization Flora and Fauna International is working with Myanmar's fisheries ministry, local authorities and local fishermen to save Myanmar from the same fate. At least three protection zones are planned for the archipelago, which will be monitored by the islanders themselves. So the area that's going to be under protection is about just over 4,000 acres. And the coral reefs that we found with inside Langang, with inside the, the LMMA, are some of the best in the archipelago. And we've actually found some of these sites of corals around 80% covered.
cover. Um, fish life and biomass is generally low but still quite diverse and um, a very important pe uh, area for the livelihood of the local people here, especially during the wet season when they can't go out far from the monsoon. The Megui archipelago has over 800 islands, many of them untouched. No scientist or tourist has ever set foot here till now. Plans to build a tourist infrastructure could radically change the islands. But even before that, the garbage of modern civilization is already being washed up here. Food containers. <laughs> This plastic breaks down. The ultraviolet light from the sun makes the plastic very fragile and it breaks down into small particles. But they never get smaller than small. They don't break down entirely. So it just becomes small enough for fish to ingest, to mistake it for plankton. The marine biologists will now spend time analyzing all the data they've collected with a view to setting up more protection zones that are urgently needed. With Myanmar being closed off for so many years, uh, I guess there was this expectation by a lot of people that the archipelago was going to be pristine, that there were going to be fish just everywhere. Um, but however, once people got into the water and started looking at these sites, they found quite the opposite. So. Unfortunately, it's not the pristine world that a lot of people have this mind of, but still, there's plenty of beautiful sites around that we're trying to protect now. <laughs> 